Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to lecture number 14. Again, I'm Professor Anand Agarwal with the Ohio State University and my colleague Dr. Arash Salami. And we would like to thank Office of Naval Research. So last time we talked about forward bias Schottky diode. And this time today we will talk about the reversed bias Schottky diode. So just to remind you, this is the energy band diagram with zero bias across the Schottky. <clears throat> so no net current is flowing. And the energy band diagram sets up like this. You have semiconductor on the right hand side, metal on the left hand side. The metal Fermi level lines up with the semiconductor Fermi level. There are two barriers shown here. One is for an electron to leave from metal over this barrier to the semiconductor shown by this black arrow. And that barrier is phi B for barrier, N for N type semiconductor. And this barrier is determined by, of course, the metal work function as we had explained last time and, on, and the electron affinity on, in the semiconductor side. Then there is a second barrier which electrons see here. So the barrier is phi B for barrier and I for initial barrier and that barrier phi B I is seen by the electrons leaving from semiconductor over this barrier going to the metal side. And again this barrier depends on the doping of the semiconductor and of course uh, uh, of course, this uh, barrier phi B n. Now, in equilibrium, the number of electrons leaving from the semiconductors from the metal side are equal to the electrons leaving from the semiconductor side. So, So the net current is zero. Now, as we said in the previous lecture, if we apply forward bias, that is positive bias to the metal with respect to semiconductor, we lower this barrier. So more electrons go from semiconductor side to the metal side and current starts flowing in the forward direction that is from metal to semiconductor in the external circuit. So today we will talk about the reverse bias. So when we apply the reverse bias, this is what happens. We basically lower the Fermi level in the semiconductor. We deplete the semiconductor. Uh, by a depletion with WD to support the external voltage V. So basically we have applied the reverse bias V which is a negative voltage on the metal with respect to the semiconductor and we have increased this barrier which was phi B I by the applied reverse voltage V. Uh, so we set up a depletion width in the semiconductor and in the depletion width we have positive charge because of the ionized donor atoms. We do not affect this barrier. So the number of electrons going from left to right from metal to semiconductor remain the same. Although later on I will show you that uh, this current is also affected by the applied field. But for now, let us assume there is a field set up 
which is pointed from left to right and that field is because of the positive charge in the semiconductor and negative charge in the metal to balance that positive charge and because of this we drop the external voltage V in the semiconductor. So, by increasing this barrier, the electron emission from the right hand side over this barrier to the metal uh, basically goes away to 0 and we have only electrons going from left to right and this current is called I 0 which is the thermionic emission over this barrier phi B n by electrons going from metal to semiconductor. This is shown, so the electrostatics of this is shown in this uh, slide. So again, as I said, we deplete the semiconductor when we apply negative voltage on the metal with respect to the semiconductor. We deplete it to a depletion with WD, which has a positive charge set up here. And the, this axis should be the charge density, which is Q times the doping of the semiconductor. And this positive charge is balanced by the negative charge on the metal side. And this sets up an electric field which is pointed from right to left which is shown in the bottom graph. So, the electric field is maximum at the interface of the metal to semiconductor and then goes to 0 at the depletion with WD. And area under this electric field which is shown with the red triangle is the total potential in the semiconductor which is externally applied reverse bias V plus phi B i which was the initial barrier as we had seen. So, now we can calculate the electrostatics of this. This electric field E is basically at the interface is given by Gauss's law to be Q times N D times W D. So, that is the total charge which is Q times N D times W T. So, this is the total charge per centimeter square of the semiconductor looking down at the junction. So, if we have 1 centimeter square area, then that is the total charge in the depletion with W D. We divide it by the permittivity of the semiconductor that gives us electric field in volts per centimeter at that interface. And this can then be solved for WD like this. And then the area of this triangle is as we said V plus phi B i, which is nothing but E times WD divided by 2, right because that is just the area of the triangle. And for WD we can substitute from the first equation and we come up with this expression for V plus V B i in terms of electric field. We have eliminated WD from this equation and now we can write this equation as E equals to uh, 2 Q N D over epsilon s times V plus phi B i and essentially square root of all that in volts per centimeter. So, you can see this electric field depends on the externally applied reverse bias. Everything else is fixed for this Schottky diode, the doping and the phi B i. So, let us look at the reverse leakage current in this diode. We have a plot of the reverse leakage current shown in the by the green curve. So, 
if you look at the previous expression we developed in the previous slide, we had this expression for the current. So, this expression for current applies to both forward and reverse bias. And uh, if V is positive and forward bias, then we know our current increases I. If we make the V negative reverse bias, then this term goes away and the external current is minus I0, which is shown here by the dotted line. And I0 is simply depends on the area, the Richardson constant, temperature and the barrier phi B n. So, we can notice several things here that if we raise the temperature, I0 will go up. If we reduce the barrier by choosing a different metal, then the current will go up, right? I0 will go up. Now, we also see a real reverse leakage current is much higher than what is predicted by this equation I0. And that is explained by three additional phenomena that is going on. One is called the barrier lowering. The second one is tunneling. And the third one is thermal generation and impact ionization. So, we will and the other feature we see that this current increases as we increase the reverse bias and then it suddenly goes up. So, from the PN junction discussion, we know this sudden increase in current is due to the avalanche breakdown, which is caused by impact ionization and thermal generation. So, we know how to what is happening here we would like to explain why this current is increasing with reverse bias. So, the first effect is barrier lowering and that is called short key barrier lowering. It is also called the image force barrier lowering. So, we have what we have shown you is a energy band diagram for the conduction band under reverse bias. And you can see that the barrier is height is phi B n. And if no field is applied, then this line here shows what the barrier should look like, a rectangular barrier. And here is the metal Fermi level. So, all the electrons in the metal are right here. Now, what happens as this electron leaves the metal over this barrier by thermal emission shown here metal semiconductor as electron is leaving, it induces a positive image charge in the metal which has a attractive force on the electron that is leaving. So, that electron then has to work to leave and that is that means it has a potential energy as it is leaving the metal. And that potential energy is shown here and this is called the image force potential energy and this is due to the traction of the electron by an image charge which is induced in the metal. Now, the second factor is when we apply voltage, we basically have an electric field in the semiconductor which we showed you in the previous slide. We have positive charge in the depletion region which sets up an electric field from right to left. And that electric field we calculated in the previous slide to be this, which depends on the externally applied reverse bias. So, if we increase the reverse bias, that field goes up. Now, this field is helping the electrons escape because this field is pointed from right 
to left which is applying a force on the electron which is pointed to the right. So, that electron is helping, that electric field is helping the electron escape the metal. So, if you add the potential energy with the electric potential energy of the electron, you get the green line and the green line is the actual potential that this electron is seeing. And we call this barrier lowering because instead of barrier being up to this point is really this. And so this we can say that this barrier is lowered by delta phi b n amount by an external applied electric field. And we can show and we will not go into the derivation in this class that delta phi b n the amount of barrier lowering is proportional to the square root of the electric field that is applied. So, you can now see that if we apply higher reverse voltage we increase that electric field and then the barrier is reduced by this expression here. So, the net barrier is the initial barrier phi b n minus the reduced barrier delta phi b n gives you the actual effective barrier. So, when this happens obviously, the electron emission over the barrier is easier because the net barrier is reduced and as we increase the reverse bias, that barrier is reduced further and therefore, the I 0 should increase uh, with voltage, which is what we see in the next slide. Here, we are plotting the short key barrier lowering that term delta phi b n versus applied breakdown voltage. So, we assume breakdown voltage is a number and we normalize it to 1 and then these points are fraction of that breakdown voltage. So, here is 50 percent of the breakdown voltage is applied. You can see silicon has a little more than 0 0.05 electron volt barrier lowering. Why is it more in silicon carbide and GAN? Because applied field is much, much higher than silicon. Therefore, the barrier lowering from the previous expression on the previous slide is much higher. So, for silicon carbide, it is 0.16 electron volt. So, when the barrier lowering is uh, higher than the leakage current, I 0 would be higher. The second effect that happens is the tunneling. So, now this is showing the reduced barrier electron. What we calculated is the current going over this barrier increases over voltage as electric field goes up and barrier effective barrier is reduced. But the second effect that happens is that since the barrier is reduced, the electron can tunnel through the barrier. So, a combination of thermal emission and then tunneling can take place and uh, that also is an effect that will increase with electric field because as electric field is applied, this effective barrier is lower and lower due to the barrier lowering or image force barrier lowering and the electron tunneling current will also increase. And the third effect is impact ionization, which we already know is uh, will cause electron and holes to uh, flow under the electric field, gain energy, uh, collide with lattice atoms and create electron hole pairs, which again flow in opposite directions and cause more electron hole pairs. So, uh, 
there is a carrier multiplication process by impact ionization which eventually results in avalanche process which we had studied under the PN junction. So, <clears throat> if we consider a 1 kilovolt 4 H silicon carbide Schottky diode, you can see different effects. The first effect is I0, that is a low current under reverse bias. We are plotting the leakage current versus the reverse bias all the way up to 1000 volts. You can see that the I0 is a low number. And then when we take barrier lowering into account, the leakage current goes up by at least three orders of magnitude at higher voltages. And as we increase the voltage, you can see that this current is increasing because the barrier is being lowered more and more. Then when we take into account the effect of tunneling, and barrier lowering, then the current increases more as we had explained. So, all these effects on the leakage current can be accounted by this equation. This is the I0 term. If you remember, uh, there should be a Richardson constant here K. Then this is the barrier lowering term and this is the tunneling term which also depends on the maximum field that is being applied because that lowers the barrier more. So, and then there is the impact ionization or carrier multiplication term because as we apply higher and higher voltage the current would be even higher because of the impact ionization and carrier multiplication and eventually the diode will avalanche and the current will go very high. All right, so then we can conclude that in short key devices under reverse bias, we have several effects going on that increase the leakage current. Therefore, the leakage current is always much, much higher than PIN diode where we only have one component that is the thermal, leak, thermal leakage current and carrier multiplication and avalanche. Uh, we can also see that I0 also depends on the initial barrier phi B n and we, if we choose a higher barrier height, then I0 will go up. And then with electric field, the barrier uh, will be lowered. And then this effect, this uh, term will be affected and this term will be affected. So everything depends on the initial barrier phi B n. And if we choose a lower phi B n, we get a higher leakage current. And this is a classical compromise in semiconductor. You can choose a lower phi B n or lower work function metal. You can reduce the knee voltage in the forward direction, but your leakage current goes up in the reverse direction. Um, so now that was a low voltage diode. Now, how can we make a low voltage Schottky diode a high voltage Schottky diode? So, essentially what we do as we did in PIN diode case, we basically have a thick N type drift layer where we can drop the extra voltage. So, in the reverse direction, this layer will deplete as we showed you before, but now it is thick and lightly doped, so it can deplete further. And that means more and more voltage can be dropped across this drift layer. But this layer has a resistance RD. So we can, in the forward direction, we can show Schottky diode as an ideal Schottky diode in series with that resistance RD. 
we have shown this on the right hand side ideal current from the ideal Schottky diode is shown with the green curve. This is the forward voltage uh, operation of the Schottky diode with the voltage knee voltage which depends on the work that work function of the metal and the initial barrier height phi b n. Now, as we add this thick drift layer, we have to account for this resistance R d. So, the net current is now shown by the red line and the slope of this red line is the resistance R d. And R d depends on the thickness of the drift layer W d and doping of the drift inversely proportional to the doping of the drift layer. And and then the mobility of the carriers mu n. So, this is the classical resistance equation, the thickness divided by the area times the resistivity which is 1 over q mu n n d. Now, I want to introduce another concept to you and that is the specific on resistance concept. So, if I take this R d and multiply by the area A, then we are left with W d over q mu n n d and this term is independent of the area of the diode. So, now we can say that specific resistance of the diode is so many milli ohms for R d centimeter square for the area. And what this means is that if area was 1 centimeter square, then the resistance of the diode would be so many milli ohms as defined by the specific on resistance. Now, if we double the area, the resistance would be half. If we have the area, the resistance will be doubled. So, a specific on resistance is a good way to compare different semiconductors because it is independent of the device area and the units are milli ohm centimeter square and we will make use of this in this course later on. So, now this slide essentially compares the forward and reverse characteristics of the PIN diode which is shown in red. You can see that the knee voltage for silicon PIN diode would be of the order of 0.7 volts. For silicon carbide this knee voltage would be of the order of 2.7 volts. And this green curve and blue curves are shown for the short key barrier diode with increasing work function metal therefore, the barrier phi b n increases. So, you can see that when we choose a lower phi b, b phi b the knee voltage is smaller. If we choose a higher phi b phi b the knee voltage for Schottky diode is higher. However, it is much less than the PIN diode which is 2.7 volt for silicon carbide, 0.7 volt for silicon. In the reverse direction, you can see that the reverse leakage current in the PIN diode is always smallest because it only depends on the carrier multiplication impact ionization and avalanche in the drift layer under the reverse bias and you get this sudden rise in the curve current shows you the avalanche multiplication. Now, as you can see that the blue curve for the diode with a higher barrier height has lower I 0 and therefore, the lower higher barrier lower I 0 
lower barrier lowering, lower tunneling, lower carrier multiplication is the same. So, you can see it has an avalanche voltage like this, but has barrier lowering term in it and tunneling term in it. The green curve has a higher I 0 because it has a lower barrier height. So, this shows you again the compromise. We can increase the barrier and reduce the leakage current in the short key diode, but then we pay the price in the forward direction with a higher knee voltage. And this is a classical compromise we have to make for short key diodes and that depends on the applications. Um, let us discuss the benefits of short key diode versus PIN diode during switching. So, here is an example of a silicon P ion diode shown in the red. It is forward biased here to about 6 amps and then it is reverse biased at time t equals to 0 and it goes through this reverse recovery as we had explained to you for the P ion diode discussion. And the diode turns off after about 75 nanoseconds and area under this curve is called QRR and that charge has to be removed from the diode because that represents the stored charge in the drift layer of the PIN diode. In short, and we know that as we increase the temperature, the lifetime improves and as lifetime increases, this charge goes up quite a bit with temperature. The blue curve shows the short key diode and you can see there is no conductivity modulation, there is no minority carrier charge in the short key diode. So, the cur reverse recovery current is very, very small and this current is essentially because of the capacitance of the diode. This is what we are seeing the capacitance of the diode here. So, this current is much smaller than the reverse recovery current of the PIN diode. So, what is the benefit of that? The benefit of that is that we can replace the silicon PIN diode with the silicon carbide short key diode in high frequency applications because the switching speed you can see is very fast. This switches in about 15 nanoseconds whereas PIN diode takes about 75 to 90 nanoseconds. So, the speed is faster, we can use it for high frequency applications. And the other thing we will see is the switching loss is also lower for short key diode in the next slide, which increases the efficiency of the uh, system. So, here we show you a uh, classical power electronics uh, uh, half bridge. We have a switch on the top, switch in the bottom, two freewheeling diodes. And these freewheeling diodes can be a PIN diode made out of silicon or can be silicon carbide Trotsky diode. Now, as we switch, and this switch can be a silicon IGBT or a silicon carbide MOSFET. We have not studied IGBTs yet or silicon carbide MOSFETs, but we will study them later in the course. But let us say at time T0, this uh, switch is off and the current is flowing 
through this diode in the converter. This is called the freewheeling diode. As time t equals to 0, we apply the gate voltage on the top switch and turn it on. The voltage across that switch will reduce, the current through that switch will increase and it will have an overshoot and then it will settle down to the forward current flowing through that switch. And that overshoot is the reverse recovery charge from this diode that this transistor has to supply. So, the current in this transistor is higher because of the reverse recovery charge of this diode. Now, the switching losses are the losses that happen during the transient and we can get the power loss by multiplying voltage with current and that is shown here for the blue line and you can see that if we are using an IGBT and a PIN diode, so this area under this curve is the energy loss of this diode and we can see that uh, that the reverse recovery of the silicon PIN diode really increases the loss in the IGBT because that reverse recovery current has to flow through the top switch. Now, here if we had a short key diode, then that reverse recovery current would be small and we show a smaller losses. We will discuss the right hand side later, but for now we should just understand that we should just understand that by replacing a silicon PIN diode with a silicon carbide short key diode, we can reduce the losses in the top IGBT. And as we increase the temperature, if this is a silicon PIN diode, you can see that the reverse recovery charge will increase and therefore, the losses in this switch will increase further. So, what has happened in the last 10, 15 years that silicon PIN diodes have been re replaced by silicon carbide Schottky diodes, which reduce the turn on losses of the IGBTs as shown here. As we replace the IGBTs with MOSFETs, we will see that the turn off switching losses are also reduced, but this part we will discuss later when we have introduced you with to IGBTs and MOSFETs. Uh, so, here is an example of some experimental work uh, presented in 2001 with uh, uh, scientists from Sikkit Electronics, they built a 1700 volt silicon carbide diode. This side shows the forward, the left side shows the reverse leakage current and you can see this 1700 volt diode is almost going to 1700 and avalanching. The solid line is the room temperature, the dotted line is 125 degrees C. So, in the forward direction you see that as we increase the temperature, initially the current is higher because your barrier is lowered and the electrons find it easier to emit over the barrier. But then the series resistance of the drift layer goes up with temperature 
and therefore the current is lower than the room temperature current. So, you can see the effect of the barrier with temperature here and then the effect of the drift layer resistance here. In the reverse side, you can see the reverse leakage current increases because the emission over the barrier depends on the temperature. The higher temperature, you get more emission over the barrier. You get same barrier lowering and tunneling, but emission over the barrier in is much easier therefore the reverse leakage current increases. Here is another example, this is the last slide I will show you. This is a work in 2003 from uh, Rutgers University. They made the first 10 kV silicon carbide short key diode and here is the short key diode, N type silicon carbide, 115 micron thick doped at 5.6 times 10 to the 14 and this is the edge of the diode and as we discussed in the case of PIN diode, it has a JTEH termination used by stepping of the uh, JTE region by etching and you can see the diode IV characteristics on the right, you can see in the reverse, it sustains more than 10,000 volt and has only about 10 microamp leakage current flowing. And again, you can see the reverse leakage current increases with reverse voltage as we have explained to you before. In the forward direction case, you can see this is a log scale on the right hand side and this is the emission over the barrier, the current increases and then the current is limited by the resistance of the drift layer. So, with this, uh, uh, we will conclude today's talk and next uh, lecture, I will explain to you how to design 600 volt short key diodes in silicon and silicon carbide, how do we choose the doping and thickness of the drift layer. We will discuss two cases, one is the non punch through case and the other is the punch through case. Most short key diodes are designed with the punch through case because it leads to smaller resistance of the drift layer. But we will discuss all this next time. So, uh, thank you for attending today's lecture and we will meet next time. Thanks again.